Are you back on this? What makes you think your luck's gonna be better this time? What's up, YouTube? This is your boy John from Project Ellsworth, and I am back with you today to give you my review of the 1998 film Halloween H2O. You know that broad's gonna hurt you, right? H2O was written by Robert Zappia and Max Greenberg. It was directed by Steve Miner. Starring LL Cool J, Josh Hartnett, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Chris Durand as The Shape. So our story begins with Nurse Chambers coming home from work and realizing that her house has been broken into. You remember Nurse Chambers. She was the woman in the car with Dr. Loomis when they were approaching Smith Grove the night that Michael Myers escaped the first time in 1978. When she realizes that her house has been broken into, she runs over next door to call the police at the neighbor's house. One of those neighbors just so happens to be Joseph Gordon Levitt, and he decides that he wants to take it upon himself to go over and check out her house before the police come. You guys know Joseph Gordon Levitt too. He's the young kid who wound up being Robin at the end of The Dark Knight Rises. Spoiler alert. So while this little punk is over there checking out Nurse Chambers' house, he quickly realizes that her office has been completely flipped upside down. While he's there, he checks out the fridge and steals a couple beers, and on his way out, he busts up the kitchen with his hockey stick. That's how I clean my kitchen. So he heads back outside, tells Nurse Chambers that the coast is clear, him and his beers go back home, Nurse Chambers enters her house. Once she gets in her house, she's realizing that things just don't quite seem right. She gets spooked, she runs back out the door and runs back over to the neighbor's house again. This time when she goes into the house, she finds Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character with a hockey skate stuck in the middle of his face. It's good work, very creative. When she tries to run out of that house, she opens the door and the other kid is standing up dead and falls into her. <laughs> Silly ass. Of course Michael shows up. He has a bit of a struggle with her. Just as the cops are arriving next door, he kills her, goes outside, and gets in the car. And what was the point of all this? He was there to get Laurie Strode's case file. You can read? And now we get reintroduced to Laurie Strode. Her name is now Carrie Tate. She faked her death, changed her name, headed out to California where she is now the headmistress of a prep school. And now, because of what this schmuck did to her in 1978, she regularly has a huge serving of too much medication with a side of alcoholism. Look what you did to that girl. Lori now also has a 17-year-old son portrayed by Josh Hartnett. Was that his first movie? I think so too. Lori, or Carrie, has strangled John with fear and paranoia to the point where this poor dude is just about ready to be done with her. So the school's planning a trip to Yosemite for all the students to go camping for a couple of days, and Lori will not let John go because after all these years, she's still afraid of Michael Myers. Well, wouldn't you be afraid? Of course you wouldn't. So because of this dispute, John and Lori have a big blow up argument and John leaves. After John leaves, him and one of his friends go to the guy who operates the front gate, he's the head of security, and that dude's name is Ronnie, and he's portrayed by LL Cool J. Yeah, I don't think so. So after a bit of convincing, Ronnie opens the gate and lets these two guys out. They wanna go out, they have a date that night, he says he wants to go get a gift. What they really wanna do is go to the liquor store and steal some booze. And while these two goofballs are out trying to steal some booze, Lori is out having a lunch date with her boyfriend, Will, where she is pounding Chardonnay. So while Lori is having lunch, she gets spooked and she runs outside. Once she goes outside, she runs into her son, 
They have a big argument out front of the restaurant. He tells her he's not coming from you. Michael Myers is dead. They get in the car and they head back. When they get back, Lori kind of chews out Ronnie a little bit. Ronnie hits John with the stink eye and then they head home. But now it seems like what John said to his mother out front of that restaurant is kind of hitting home and Lori decides to let John go to Yosemite. But John, his girlfriend, and the other couple come up with a brilliant idea to not go to Yosemite. If everybody goes away, that leaves them guys there alone and they have the campus to themselves. So after everybody leaves for Yosemite and these four kids go and hide, Michael Myers distracts the security guard and sneaks onto the property. Meanwhile, Lori is back at her apartment with her boyfriend, Will, and she decides to finally come clean and let him know who she really is. And after she tells him, he's kind of freaked out now too, they decide to have a drink. When they're having that drink, Lori realizes what happened to her was on Halloween night and now it's Halloween night. When this happened to her, she was 17, John is 17. She has a bit of a panic attack. She picks up the phone, the phone lines are dead. She opens the closet and she finds sleeping bags. Somebody didn't go to Yosemite. Or is it Yosemite? Nah, I don't care either. So now Lori's freaked out. Her boyfriend is completely freaked out. There's four teenagers wandering around on this campus with no supervision. And there's a serial killer wandering around in here with them. Good times. I absolutely loved H2O. I think that bringing Lori Strode, Lori Strode, Lord, bringing Jamie Lee Curtis back into the fold, breathed new life into this dying franchise. I know that there was a big following for Halloween. There always has been a big following for Halloween. I've always followed Halloween. But those last several movies were, were kind of on you know some shaky legs. I think they get more respect now than they did back then. They were kind of a joke back then. We all love them now when we look back on them. But Jamie Lee Curtis coming back into the fold definitely gave this franchise some credibility again. There are very few things about this movie that I did not like, but the one that jumps out and slaps you right in the face is the multiple masks of Michael Myers throughout this movie. There were, there were issues with the, with the mask, which is why you see either three or four masks in this movie. Initially, they were planning to use the, uh, make a mold from the uh, Halloween 6, which is why you get one mask. There are scenes with that mask sprinkled throughout the movie. Then there was, uh, they were going to go in a completely different direction with the mask, which is where you get the real stark white mask with the oversized bug eye eye holes that you see a couple of times in the movie. Then they decided that they hated that stupid looking mask, which quite frankly, I can't believe anybody ever liked that thing in the first place. So they did a bunch of reshoots, which is where you come, uh, with, come up with the mask that you see for most of this movie. Then there's the really bad CGI part that I'm not really sure exactly what happened there. I think personally, if I had to guess, I would say they forgot to reshoot that. That scene was originally shot with the big alien mask, the, that ridiculous looking mask, and they just flat out couldn't use it. So they transposed a CGI mask over top of the stupid looking mask, which is why it looks flat and gray with the eyes that don't quite line up right. I think that that's what happened there, but that's just bad planning in my opinion is ultimately why we have a smorgasbord of stupid looking masks in a Halloween H2O. There's another scene in this movie that I that really kind of irks me a bit where Lori is walking in a hallway inside of the school and Michael comes down from above behind her and you're, you, you would think that he's just dropping down from something. That's what your mind immediately tells you. But no, they pan the camera around and he's holding onto a bar and lowering, lowering himself down. So apparently he's got like Olympic athlete str stronger than Olympic athlete strength. He was holding himself up. Uh, number one, why didn't she see him when she walked, was approaching him, walked under him, whatever. That, that's problem one. Why wouldn't she see that? A dark figure hanging from a white ceiling from a pole. Stupid. All right. Next, 
How was he balancing himself up there? Next, how did he get up there? Next, how the, the laws of physics don't allow you to hold on to a pole and A, be up that high unless you're standing straight. So maybe he was doing a one-armed handstand on top of this pole and then slowly tilted his body around and then slowly tilted out like a hinge and lowered it to stupid. Bad. Everything about that's bad, it's stupid, but if that's the biggest thing that I can complain about, about it, other than the mask, so be it. It is what it is. It lasts five seconds to 10 seconds, whatever. But it's really freaking stupid. And the final thing that I really didn't like about this movie really should, is it's better served to be addressed at the beginning of my review for Halloween Resurrection. Something happens at the end of this movie that's explained in the next movie that's really kind of off-putting and pretty ridiculous. In reality, it just simply wouldn't have played out like that. But we'll talk about that later. Now moving on to the stuff that I did like about H2O, everything else. I love the cast. I think the story's interesting, compelling, possible. And uh, again, bringing Jamie Lee Curtis back was just absolutely brilliant. The franchise definitely needed her. I think that this could arguably be considered the best cast overall. Uh, there was a pretty star-studded cast in the Rob Zombie films. Looking back now, the cast from Halloween 1 and 2 and 3 is pretty spectacular, but it wasn't back then. Uh, it was a whole bunch of nobodies and Donald Pleasants, really. Um, but this cast, Jamie Lee Curtis, Josh Hartnett, but yeah, then again, Josh Hartnett was nobody before this either. Jamie Lee Curtis, Josh Hartnett, uh, LL Cool J, and that cast pulled this movie off without a hitch. I thought it was really, really good. And then there's you. Chris Duran was really good as the shape in this movie. I thought he pulled off the Michael Myers character very, very well in this. He was scary, he was creepy. The scene where he's walking along and flipping tables in this movie is really good. The scenes of him just walking around out in the dark were great. The scenes in the beginning of the movie with Nurse Chambers and uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt were great. Overall, I just thought he did a fantastic job. I can't hold it against him what happened in post and the, the, the fact that they put a stupid mask on him. That None of that's his fault. What he did on screen as Michael Myers I thought was fantastic. A couple of those masks were pretty stupid though. So that's it. Those are my thoughts on Halloween H2O. Leave me some comments down below and let me know if you like this movie as much as I did. And also let me know where would this movie fall in your own personal ranks of the Halloween movies in the Halloween franchise. I'm going to get out of here. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like this video and you've been enjoying my content, please do me a huge personal favor. Click that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Have a kick-ass day. And thank you for watching. Later, my dude. Until next time.